Welcome everyone to today's Space and Tech Lab seminars. Uh, it is my pleasure to introduce Buju Uzduru. She is professor at the Gazi University's Faculty of Architecture in Ankara in Turkey. She holds a PhD in city and regional planning from the Ohio State University in the USA, as well as a BCRP and an MSc in urban design from the Middle East Technical University in Ankara. Her recent publication associating street network centrality with spontaneous and planned subcenters was published in Urban Studies. And most recently, she's been awarded a grant by the Scientific Research Council of Turkey for her pro project focused on the relationship of built environments and quality of life using a participant participatory approach. Today, she will talk about intra-urban centrality levels through street networks and showing evidence from Ankara's urban growth. And before we start, I'd like to emphasize, if you have questions during the talk, please put them in the chat so we can address them at the very end. And with this, I'd like to hand over to you, Bujo. Okay, thank you. Uh, first of all, uh, maybe I should share my screen. Yes. Uh, okay, I hope everyone is hearing me well. Loud and clear. That's good. Hmm. I would like to, first of all, of course, thank uh, Dr. Krenz Kimmon and his committee for selecting um, my research uh, on this topic and seeing some worthwhile uh, interesting uh, subtopics that can be discussed here. So thank you very much for giving this opportunity. Uh, I sincerely appreciate it. Um, also, uh, I would like to um, say that I'm by profession, profession an urban planner. For that reason, uh, my goal has been uh, to link the normative uh, principles in the urban environment and the built environment to quantitative uh, research. Uh, for that reason, I try to always infer some information from the built environment. Uh, for, that for that reason, you will see uh, a lot of maybe description at the beginning. I will try to link them to the uh, quantitative analysis that we have done in recent years. But in the meantime, I will use Ankara as a case study because I have uh, mostly gathered a lot of data about Ankara, the city that I live. Uh, it is the capital city of Turkey. It is the second largest city, uh, has some homogeneity in uh, neighborhood distribution. That's why it's, it provides an easier you know, uh, environment to work with. Uh, sometimes uh, some of the procedures that you see uh, can be differentiated. And recently, in the last 20 years, the city has grown uh, immensely uh, it, in such a way that it can be an example for uh, urban sprawl. For that reason, I think, uh, I hope, of course, uh, it will make sense for you to, to understand uh, intra-urban centrality change uh, through street networks of Ankara. I hope it will also make sense for you all, uh, because sometimes uh, one city doesn't uh, provide all the information that you look for, uh, but I, I will try to make a sense of it for you. Uh, okay, uh, thank you so much again for everything. Um, okay, I hope that it will flow. Okay, my... Um, my discussion, my speech here uh, will be composed of these uh, three subsections. Uh, at the beginning, I will try to explain uh, some city center interest uh, subcenter formation and its relationship to uh, centralities through street networks. Uh, I will use again uh, Ankara, uh, the capital city of Turkey. Uh, but afterwards, I will also build a uh, relationship between classical theories on land use and centrality and network model uh, of uh, sub-center formation. Uh, I should also give a lot of uh, credit to SPNA plus uh, creators here. Uh, we have worked with, that, with them for the last uh, maybe 10 years. They have really provided uh, a go good method for street network analysis to me. 
Professor Elaine Sharadia and Professor Chris Webster has been our mentor uh, for the last uh, two projects that we have conducted. Uh, I would like to, uh, you know, also uh, provide special thanks to them because without them, I wouldn't have uh, used SDNA this uh, effectively. So uh, centrality analysis is mostly going to be uh, based on uh, SDNA analysis. I think uh, most people here are familiar with the indices that are generated by space syntax. So SDNA provides some uh, version of uh, those indices. For that reason, I hope that it will also make sense for you. Uh, afterwards, I will, uh, you know, in three subsections, I will explain my recent, recent research uh, along with uh, my uh, master's students and uh, my uh, colleagues uh, here in Ankara again. Um, so this will be uh, also show a broad, uh, you know, flow from what, how and why uh, type of questions, I hope. Okay, uh, well, you know, from uh, Gruen uh, to Jane Jacobs, all of the city theorists have put uh, some emphasis on city centers, uh, and it is the heart of our cities, that's for sure. But uh, each city center has its own type of uh, typology and morphology, and it provides a great, you know, uh, vast, um, vast information for all of us, uh, to work with. For that reason, uh, it is nice to look at these pictures, but what we should gather uh, should be depending on our approach, uh, whether it is normative of, or quantitative. Uh, and I, I am uh, specifically, um, you know, um, fond of city centers because they, they are very dynamic. They change all the time. And uh, land use is very much mixed. For that reason, it is very hard and challenging to analyze city centers. Uh, and uh, I am somehow uh, from my bachelor degree, bachelor degree to uh, master's degree, I have always had keen interest on uh, city centers and its analysis. For that reason, I have also uh, focused my research on commercial network, commercial development and city center development. <laughs> Um, so, um, cities bring people together, but at the same time, the, its spontaneity and self-organizing structure gives out us hard time to plan, plan it uh, as urban planners. We cannot set uh, rules that can um, generate city centers and its development. Uh, we set up the rules and they are always uh, somehow... Um, try to be challenged by authorities because people don't like rules and for urban planners it is always challenging to uh, control them. For that reason, what do we do? We look at uh, cities and try to gather and infer some information from them. Uh, at the same time, city centers uh, face a lot of obstacles. Uh, it has been uh, in the literature uh, specified along those subsections, but there could be others that I haven't included here. Uh, but urban growth had, has had always impact, a big impact on city center development. For that reason, when city centers grow, uh, I think public realm changes, design changes, accessibility opportunities changes. And as I said, uh, Ankara has been growing immensely for the past 20 years. For that reason, uh, a lot of dynamics in Ankara has changed as well. It is not a stable city uh, and it provides uh, very interesting scenes for us. Um, there is a center and, and all of us know these from the literature, so maybe I shouldn't go through them, but uh, the increase in mobility and you can see a, a traffic jam here in Ankara in the below uh, here in the below uh, picture. Uh, it is always, uh, street networks always provide a good environment for inferring information for the city. Uh, and you can see that suburbanization also in Ankara has been a big topic in the past few years. You can see some uh, uh, of the past, you know, city center uh, photos here. They are interesting to me because um, you can see 
first of all, it is at an, a human scale. It emphasizes a lot of green space. But afterwards, you can see that uh, it has been killed by the uh, growth of the uh, roads. So traffic or mobility maybe kind of uh, changes the urban design of city centers. In, uh, this, is, this can be seen in Ankara. You can see it elsewhere as well, I'm sure. Uh, but uh, these photos in 20 years uh, apart, you can see that the city has changed immensely with its morphology. And now, uh, of course, destruction and rebuilding, it also creates a lot of um, challenges for the cities and for us urban planners as well. We try to control this change. We try to control this dynamism. Uh, maybe it is for nothing, but uh, we do our best in order to do that. As you can see, the city center is now dominated by a shopping, shopping center, along with a lot of uh, commercial units around it. But uh, in 20 minutes, uh, 20 years, you can see a lot of change uh, in such developing countries and uh, in the capital city of a, a country. Uh, this is another thing. Uh, in the urban fringe, we also see the change. Uh, as you can see, this was taken 20 years ago, almost 20 years ago. And now there's a shopping center and the resi some residences around it, uh, an office block. Uh, in 10 years, you can see this change in the urban fringe of the city. This is not belonging to a lot of, uh, only this part, but you can see it around the city as well. And now uh, in 10 years, another 10 years, again, it changes. Sometimes uh, the urban infrastructure stays the same and still there is uh, there are buildings that are built. So uh, this infrastructure is not enough most of the time and creates a lot of traffic jam at the end. So uh, here, urban planners need to, of course, pull their strings, uh, which is information gathering and maybe uh, some knowledge, uh, know-how exchange, and should tell the ministers and the uh, local authorities to plan for infrastructure as well, not only growth and not only for uh, urban rent. Um, well, this is also, again, an, an example of Ankara's growth. Uh, at the uh, far uh, left here, you can see the small uh, city center, uh, which was uh, composed of few hectares and it had residences, commercial areas and the helicopter piece here, uh, a lot of things. But uh, in the 70s, it grew from north to south and in 90s from east to west. Now it, it is sprawling still uh, through these axes. So it is very hard to put a belt on it and try to control growth. Uh, city center also went went through the same thing. Uh, in our actually uh, final paper, we have analyzed that although this uh, control uh, has been uh, by creating a cap on uh, commercial development, uh, the lo local authorities couldn't uh, you know, um, achieve their goal. And spontaneity is more common in city center development. Um, mostly uh, commercial city centers or commercial units develop uh, by, by a self-organizing hand, which is by themselves. So although you are as planners, you show some locations for them and say that you can create your or, you know, run your business here. Uh, the dynamism of the city pulls its strings and uh, pushes and maybe sometimes pulls uh, the development land used to other sites. You can see this from the city center development here as well. So uh, Ankara has developed uh, from monocentric to polycentric city. So it is also another uh, qualification that I should mention here, maybe. Uh, how do we, how do we uh, actually analyze this structure? It is very dynamic. It is growing uh, immensely. And for the past, you know, maybe you have heard about the earthquake in Turkey uh, in uh, February. Because of that, also Ankara provided a lot of uh, accommodation for the uh, people who have suffered from the disaster. And the city uh, population has 
also increased recently. So uh, there is a flow of people uh, from other sides of the country. So it is again, you know, uh, gathering some in migration. Uh, at the same time, the city is uh, trying to be by itself and try to control uh, itself. Uh, how, is, how it is going to be and how, what should we do actually as urban planners? That's my quest. So there have been normative approaches for city centers. These are very common uh, topics about city centers, uh, sorry, uh, normative approaches. Uh, we know Kevin Lynch and Victor Gruen, William White, uh, Jane Jacobs also not uh, presented here, but a lot of uh, theorists try to explain cities and city centers. Also, also there's the ecological models, economic models, uh, hypothetical models like the central place theory, but density and activity locations provide something else. What do we link with? We link them together with, uh, of course, street networks and special networks. Uh, street networks are the basic ones that we use, but at the same time, other networks such as night lights or maybe um, uh, water sewage canals can be also used, uh, but street networks is easier to look at and maybe analyze. That's why uh, in, in most uh, of our research, we used street networks as the special uh, network for the background of our studies. Uh, well, there have been a lot of things about uh, street networks and um, it has been analyzed by SDNA and also some other tools. Like, uh, I, I, as far as I know, Space Syntax uses that map. Uh, and I think there is a UNA that uses a, another uh, uh, software. Uh, but we used SDNA. It was easy for us to understand how the city works. This is an example, uh, literature example. Uh, and it provided a lot of uh, opportunities for us with the indices it created. Uh, also, I should also give credit here to uh, Crispin Cooper, Alain Sharadia, and Chris Webster again here. I would like to share this slide with you. If you are interested, you can also check the website and uh, look at their uh, studies. Uh, in our network analysis, we used connections, of course, and between us showed a lot of information. Uh, it, it provides uh, people, uh, the, the, the thing that this network's part is uh, more important, it has higher importance than other uh, parts of the network. For that reason, betweenness was one of our major indices. We also used uh, other indices like closeness, uh, connectivity, etc. Uh, but I think some of them uh, fell uh, on the way when we were running our regressions and quantitative analysis because uh, they didn't generate significant results. Uh, also, I should, uh, I mean, thank you at the very beginning, uh, Dr. Krantz, you asked about uh, uh, the unit, unit that we used. Uh, actually, um, this is always a common concern among urban planners. We try to use uh, something, a, a geographic unit that would make sense. Uh, in our analysis, we tried to use both uh, street networks and their aggregated versions uh, by neighborhoods. Uh, it provided us uh, a, an easier, uh, an easier uh, maybe comparison for opportunity for um, dependent and independent variable uh, connection. But at the same time, I'm, I should also emphasize here that uh, using maybe street links can get provide a lot of information. But uh, unfortunately, here in Ankara, Turkey, we don't have that uh, seg that uh, disaggregated data. So we couldn't use any uh, anything other than uh, the smallest data set that we could obtain, which is a neighborhood unit. Uh, I know that in the U.S. there is census block data, and sometimes you can even go to go deeper to census tracts. It's easier to gather data that way, but uh, in in Turkey it is not very easy. Um, okay, again, uh, I should show uh, here 
a, a, a neighborhood. What what do I mean by a neighborhood? A neighborhood can be sometime a sometimes a little bit heter in a heterogeneous way. Uh, one part of it can be empty uh, or vacant, I should say, and one part can be uh, structured and built. Uh, but at the same time, the network of uh, streets provides some type of uh, commonality. That's why it provided us a good opportunity for using those indices at the neighborhood level. Okay, well, uh, we we have um, uh, analyzed accessibility through Ankara. As you can see, uh, we have selected closeness, uh, one of the most useful uh, indices that we used on the left-hand side. Uh, it is also called mean angular distance. Uh, on the right-hand side, you see betweenness, uh, again, with an angular uh, approach. Uh, here we used uh, walkability at the same time uh, by using uh, our radius as thousand meters, which is um, which is the common uh, or maybe I should say average distance that a regular person in Ankara walks. That's why we selected thousand meters. I know it is low and it is not good for obesity. <laughs> but still uh, I would like to emphasize it here. We aggregated this data to neighborhoods and uh, as you can see, the left, uh, east and west are differentiated and somehow north and south of Ankara are also differentiated. Um, what, but at the same time, if you uh, look, look at it at the street segment level, you can see some differences uh, in a disaggregated way. Uh, as I said, we didn't uh, compare our data at the street network level, uh, but we compared it uh, at the aggregated level, unfortunately. But still, we also own this, uh, you know, information in order to understand how uh, it is linked to uh, our research topics. Um, I would like to also show that uh, for 5,000 meters, of course, this two-phase between this uh, angular in this changes, uh, major networks become the uh, most popular or highest uh, in this uh, street networks. Uh, th this is very important for, I mean, between this is very important because um, people tend to locate, for example, their commercial uh, units on these uh, roads. That's why it, it makes sense for us to gather the, their uh, range. Uh, if it is more popular, I mean, uh, and a street network is more popular, it means that uh, its betweenness is high, especially for driving distance, it is high. Uh, on the right hand side, you also see uh, by the distance uh, to the city center how this uh, uh, in this changes. Uh, as you can see with the three um, balloons here with, in, on the graph, you can see that there are some centralities or maybe higher between this, uh, in this locations in the maybe 10,000 uh, meter uh, distance from the city center, but below, beyond that it, fa it falls. So when there is a more built environment or more maybe settled areas in a network, uh, you can see that two-phase betweenness is increasing, especially at the driving distance mode. Uh, we took again 5,000 meter because uh, again, average person in, in Ankara uh, drives five kilometers uh, daily, or it's a commuting distance. Um, again, uh, what I meant by betweenness shows uh, some some type of its uh, appearances here. You can see that for 400 or walk very uh, near walking distance, other locations are having higher uh, betweennesses, but for 5,000 major roads have uh, higher betweenness rates. Uh, this shows that, uh, you know, uh, maybe local shops can select these locations for their uh, um, businesses, but uh, for maybe larger uh, commercial centers or commercial areas, uh, this can be better because uh, then they would have parking spaces for uh, people who are driving by. Uh, so when we uh, also looked at uh, in our uh, uh, in our final paper the locations of urban services, you can see that 
uh, this uh, two phase between us and other uh, indices are overlapped with commercial uh, unit locations. And we have seen that there is some type of a, a negative uh, relationship between between us and their locations when they are uh, from, sorry, I should maybe uh, say that these codes are uh, belonging to other uh, commercial units. They are kind of uh, uh, specialized. Here you can see all of them uh, when I said uh, commercial units. Here, uh, 46, for example, belongs to manufacturing, 47 belongs to retail, and 41 belongs to uh, construction sector. And you can see that when uh, construction sector prefers uh, higher between the areas, by driving distance, but uh, manufacturing doesn't uh, want such uh, accessible areas. Uh, also in Turkey, they are mostly located on the outer side of uh, the city. For that reason, uh, this, this makes sense. I mean, the change in um, sign makes sense. Uh, you can say a lot of things from this uh, maybe uh, table, but uh, maybe I should only dwell on the most important ones. Uh, for that reason, I'm not going into the details, but if you have questions, we can discuss. Uh, also, this is also, uh, the results are provided in our uh, final uh, paper. Uh, our approach was uh, to understand the relationship between uh, or urban street network and multi-sector enterprise clustering. For that reason, we looked at various sectors that are most common in Ankara. Uh, and the locations we can, as I said at the very beginning, uh, are gathering or growing out uh, spontane spontaneously. Uh, they do not have, have any rules, but we have found out that they prefer some rules for accessibility. Uh, for that reason, uh, it was an important finding uh, for the city's growth and uh, sectoral locations. Uh, we can say a lot of things about urban morphology assessment. This was one of them, like commercial uh, center locations or commercial unit locations. Uh, we can say a lot of things. Uh, we have done a lot of research. We have, for example, analyzed locations of chain supermarkets and linked this to centrality variables, which made sense and created some positive uh, correlations. For that reason, we try to always um, keep uh, chain supermarket locations as a proxy for centrality in Ankara. Uh, it makes sense. And also um, food and eateries are also included in, uh, in the second uh, map here. It, it writes in Turkish, sorry, uh, we generated these uh, for uh, a Turkish report. That's why uh, I try to explain it here. Um, this is uh, one of the studies that I have done with my uh, master's students. Uh, she, uh, I, I should uh, may, maybe mention her here. She's among the audience as well. Uh, she found out that with green space and street morphology, uh, there's a negative relationship between them. I mean, when there's more accessibility, of course, more roads, maybe more areas for construction and built environment, there is less uh, green area. Uh, agglomeration. Um, that was a finding, that was one of the findings that she generated. Uh, she also looked at uh, other uh, socioeconomic and built environment variables, but uh, I would like to mention one of the uh, accessibility related result that she found uh, in her thesis. Uh, in another thesis uh, about mental health and street morphology, one of my students, uh, again, it writes in Turkish, I'm sorry, uh, but uh, she also found that um, there is a negative relationship between accessibility and uh, mental health prevalences. Uh, it means that uh, the more accessible one place is or the more walkable one place is, it uh, has uh, less... Um, possibility of having men you have uh, or maybe people have less possibility of having mental health issues uh, that is good because uh, people can uh, go outside and maybe uh, reach urban services easily that's why it provides some type of a relationship negative uh, relationship on the health uh, issue 
Uh, also, vitality goes along with street morphology and accessibility. When the network is very built up and uh, there is more accessibility, of course, there is more vitality. This is also from another master's thesis that uh, uh, we worked on together with Ahmed Safa. Uh, and uh, again, uh, he found that urban vitality and accessibility between us has positive relationship, among other things. This is just one of the uh, results that we gathered for um, this analysis. When we say urban vitality, again, she, he used um, locations of urban services along with uh, common eateries and uh, drinking places along with uh, chain supermarkets. So he used uh, many other uh, proxies for urban vitality. Uh, I'm just uh, summarizing it. it summarizing the results here. So uh, in our case uh, from Ankara, we can see that the street network provides a lot of information. It is like the, uh, you know, um, uh, inside of the city. It's like the DNA of the city. So we try to gather, gather or infer the relationship uh, and the findings from its, uh, you know, uh, morphology. Uh, I would like to say thank you. I hope it is not too long or too short, uh, but I would like to thank you again. <laughs>